All right, here we are. We're going live on our exciting live stream keyboard review. Woo! So I'm I'm going to talk about uh, eight different keyboards that I have with me right here. Some of them I've used for a long time. Some of them are kind of new. So what we're talking about is Media Center keyboard touchpad combos. So you have a PC in your living room attached to your TV, and you're looking for one device to operate everything, and that's what we're uh, that's what we're checking out here. So I've got eight of these. They're all fairly reasonably priced. Uh, they have advantages and disadvantages, and, and I just want to give you a feel, kind of evaluate them on all the categories to give you an idea uh, of why you might like might like each one of them. So I'm going to start with the smallest ones and then go up to the biggest ones. All right, the first one I have here is the first one that I ever got. Uh, this was the one I got just. I thought this keyboard would be all of my media center needs. It's a, it's a really, it's a really old one, but you can still get it because it's been remanufactured. Uh, this is right here, little tiny keyboard, the Zowie Tech ZW-5100 6BT. Uh, it's also manufactured by Re under the same number. Um, this one you can get for about twenty-five dollars now. Um, obviously it's a, it's obviously it's pretty tiny. It's not the, it's not the slimmest, um, but it's, you know, it's mostly pretty small. Uh, this one. Okay. So let's talk about connectivity really quick. Okay. There's basically two connectivity options for all these wireless keyboards. Some of them are, some of them are Bluetooth based, right? And some of them are Wi-Fi based. The Wi-Fi ones require some kind of USB dongle. Well, not Wi-Fi being a, you know, wireless you know, 2.4 gigahertz and not Wi-Fi like over your network. Um, so all of those require a USB dongle to operate. Um, so the Bluetooth can be kind of convenient, but um, the Blue. So all of the Wi-Fi keyboards can easily wake up your computer from a sleep state most of the time. Um, the Bluetooth keyboards may or may not, depending on your computer, be able to wake up the computer from a sleep state. So that's something to think about. Otherwise, Bluetooth would probably be more convenient. So this device right here does both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Uh, if you look right up here on the top, there is a dongle that comes out that is nicely stored in the keyboard. And that kind of is one of the first features that actually tells us what this device is really all about because it wasn't actually invented for media centers. Most of these other devices kind of had media centers on the mind. This one, a little different. Um, so uh, the power, it has a, this one has a micro USB, or sorry, mini USB, which I mean, which is one reason why you know it's ancient, but it's rechargeable, no batteries uh, needed, needed to be added. Um, so the keyboard layout on this one, you'll notice that it's fairly square. The, the keyboards are not, the keys are not offset like they are on a normal keyboard. Um, this means that typing on it, um, and, well, that in addition to the fact that there are many buttons replaced in other, other other places means you'll probably need to look at this keyboard a lot while typing on it. Um, a lot of the small keyboards, that's just the case. You need to look at them while typing on it. Um, ergonomically, it's it's a fairly easy hold. You can kind of hold it like this, right? The, the keyboard, at least. Um, there are... Now, this one has... The function keys up the top are the primary keys instead of the secondary keys, as you'll see a lot, a lot of these keyboards, but there are only eight function keys. Otherwise, the keyboard is pretty complete. No scroll lock, who cares, but it does have a print screen, which most of them don't have. If you like taking screenshots with the print screen button, then, well, there you go. Um, uh, the, um, there are a set of media keys. When, if you press the function button, you can have the media keys for basic media playback on top. Um, also has a control alt delete button, which is nice if you need to switch users as I do sometimes on other machines. Um, so the mouse, so this is where we're going to start talking about. So in addition to the basic ergonomics of the mouse, we have to consider how easy the mouse is to use. We're going to talk about how the feel of the mouse pad for each one of these devices as you go across them. We're going to talk about how well the mouse does in two different kinds of motion. First, on fast motion, and second, on small, accurate motions. We're also concerned about the clicking and how, how easy the clicking is on, on it. And we're also concerned about the scrolling and any extra features that the mouse might have. So this one 
has a pretty decent fast scroll, okay? And um, the, the accurate scroll is a little rough though. It's kind of in the middle of the pack in terms of accuracy. It's not the least accurate. Because it has this indented mouse area, there's not a lot of space to move your fingers on, but it's completely smooth in terms of feel. Um, like I said, it's kind of middle in the pack of these, which really isn't very good, but it's very, it's definitely usable. Um, unlike every other one of these, this one does not have any scrolling motion. Now, for all I know, the newer models of this one might have included scrolling, but most of them you can expect to use two fingers in order to scroll on, on the device. Uh, that's not here. Um, so, um, there, there are also, you know, arrow keys, you know, around here. Um, didn't mention that. So that's another consideration is, you know, where the arrow keys are, what they do. Um, you, so in general, uh, I like this keyboard as a really tiny carry around keyboard for random devices, but I don't think it's efficient for media center keyboard. Now, now, now for the most part, um, for the most part, this is going to apply to all the small keyboards, but you're giving up a tremendous amount uh, if you go to a size this small and just the type, you know, the, the ability to type accurately, the ability to type quickly. Um, and you're, you're often giving a lot in terms of giving up a lot in terms of mouse accuracy. So if you absolutely don't want a large keyboard hanging around your living room, then you can go for the smaller ones. And this is kind of kind of in the middle of the pack. Um, now this now the one other feature which kind of gives away what this keyboard was invented for is the <clears throat> let me turn this on is the laser pointer up at the top. This keyboard was designed for multimedia presentations. So if you're somebody giving a bunch of presentations, you take this keyboard with you, you pull it out, you use it to the presentations, use it to page through PowerPoint or whatever. I I I think this is of the really small though with three really small options we pull out. Of the three really small options, this one is generally in the middle for me, although it kind of fights with the other one, with, with, with the third option in terms of usability. But like I said, if you want a small keyboard, this is one of your options, but I think, like I said, I, 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 don't, think I, would, I don't think I would choose this one anymore. I don't mind having it though for odds and ends for carry around keyboard. <clears throat> All right. The next keyboard is is kind of a little bit different in style. This is the Flavormates H10C. Okay. Oh, did I get the price on the keyboard? I may have forgotten. Can't go back and edit. This is live stream. Uh, so this is a this is a twenty five dollar. I did say that twenty five dollar keyboard. So the Flavormates H10C. Uh, this is dead. It's gone. I lost it. Uh, this is a reasonable $18. Now what this keyboard is trying to do is it's trying to be a like a remote control. This one has its eye firmly targeted on the living room usability. So um, so on the back side we have a we have the keyboard, right? And this is the weakest keyboard of all the devices by far. Uh, the now it is offset, but it has no numbers on it unless you press um, the uh, the Alt key in order to bring the numbers up, which is just weird. Uh, that 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 generally means that you're going to be very limited on what you can do on this keyboard in term well modestly limited, right? So it's just like in terms of like full PC operations, you're likely to run into limitations, problems, issues, which keep you from working with it. The feel of the keys it actually has, like I said, it, it's it's okay. Um, there, there aren't a lot of special buttons. They added some room for a dub 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 and a dot com button. I think they were trying to view this as like a keyboard you might use on your PlayStation or something. But I, you know, but even then, it's got an Internet Explorer button on it, and you know, it's just if you want to bring up Internet Explorer, you can press Internet Explorer button. That's what everyone does nowadays. Is on Internet Explorer. It's the most popular thing. Uh, this keyboard does have some illumination you might see. I really don't care about the illumination on these keyboards. You might do it because it's pretty, but I've never found I've never found a keyboard that um, that I was operating in so little light that the illumination actually made any difference. Like you have to be just, the TV just has to be completely dark. 
for you to actually care about the illumination coming from these things. Um, just a sideshow to me. So, um, so that's the, uh, so that's, that's, that's the keyboard. Uh, you know, it's, it's, um, you know, ergonomically, you know, not, not particularly great, missing a lot of keys, doesn't have function keys. Um, so now it doesn't have media keys on this side because on the back side we have the, the kind of the full media remote, but you know, these operate as the arrow keys, you know, you know, uh, you know, okay button, just, you know, I believe it's operating as an enter button, I believe if my memory's correct, you know, m multimedia keys to go back and forth. This little button turns off the mouse and back on, and we'll get to why that's important in a moment. Uh, volume buttons, page up and page down buttons, nice little light button. You can see it light up. It's very exciting. Um, uh, apparently, I triggered something. There's a computer running over there, so I can kind of look at what the mouse is doing while I'm, while I'm operating it, and which is important right now. Um, also, a power button on this one, I honestly... Okay, so this is just me, right? I don't really want a power button on my remote control. The main reason is because, or my keyboard or anything. Because the main reason is it just gets pressed too easily. And you accidentally press it and the whole system goes down. And I press this and we lose our whole presentation here. Uh, mute button though, mute button is generally an important thing to have and it's nice and big on this one. So let's talk about the mouse situation. That's where this gets interesting. And that's why I'm not completely throwing this out just by the terrible keyboard. Okay, so it does, the mouse pad itself is actually not very good. Okay, um, it's it you know it's a traditional. Um, most of these have, you know, this is something that that, that device you know the, the first device the uh, ZW5100 doesn't have. Most of these have you know it's just simple scrolling around. Uh, you know one button one button uh, one button one finger right click uh, two fingers. Um, yeah, excuse me, one finger left click, two finger right click. Left and right is always a very difficult thing for me. I cannot keep track of these. And two fingers and slide will scroll you up and scroll you down. Now, in terms of in terms of speed motion, this is by far the worst pad for speed motion. Now, you can always increase the speed of the motion of the mouse on your PC, but that means any other keyboard you have set up is going to be going super fast. And this thing's so slow that your PC just doesn't have enough speed settings to get it much faster. So this pad is just, you know, it's just bad that way. Um, additionally, so now it has scroll up and down with two fingers, but unlike most of these devices, it does not have left and right scroll with two fingers. So you can't scroll items left and right, which, you know, with the way... Okay, so when you're operating a keyboard on your TV, you're likely to have things zoomed in, just kind of the way it is, and so the chances of needing to scroll left and right are generally generally higher. So I think that two finger slide left and right is generally rather a nice thing to have, but it's not the end of the world. And usually you can use the arrow keys to get around that too. Sometimes a web page is really wacky and you cannot use the arrow keys to navigate it though. All right. So after all that, you're thinking, well, what does this have that's so interesting? All right. Well, this device also kind of acts like a Wiimote, okay? You can point it at the screen, okay? And move it up and down and you move the mouse pointer. Like a Wiimote, your pointing may be a little bit shaky as you do this, so, you know, it's, it's not perfect, but it works. And it's actually a much better pointer mode than the other side. Um, so, uh, you know, and you can you can use the button. I guess, I guess it's a mouse button, not an enter button, that's right. Um, I don't remember what this remote does. I'm supposed to review this, and I don't remember. So, you know, you can go here, you can go click things around, and it gives you this nice interface. A lot of TVs have this kind of thing right now, uh, where the remote control allows you to click around, um, you know, just, which can be kind of annoying, but... Um, so, that's the big feature on this one. Like I said, it works okay. It doesn't work too bad. All that said, if you have a use case where pointing the remote at the TV and moving it around is really useful to you. This is right. This 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 will work for you. This will be, but you will have compromises in order to do that because you will have difficulty operating your whole PC. But, um, but for most normal cases, the trackpad on any mouse will probably be sufficient anyway. I mean, you can move this thing real fast because you can point a lot of directions, but. I, I believe that for most people, you will not want this Wiimote style functionality. So for that reason, of the small items, this one ends up, uh, for me, probably in just third place. Just something I, 
you know, it's just like, and the remote control shape and everything, it just doesn't matter. You know, as we'll see on the next item, you know, it's like, yes, holding it in your hand like this is nice and cute, but like, like when you ever have like a t keyboard item, you just want to use a two hand, two finger grip anyway. So onto that, let's get onto the next item, which is the most affordable on the list, at least in terms of what I paid for. This is the Okella Q9 Black. It also comes in multiple colors. It has, uh, it is only $15. So it is a pretty affordable little thing. Now it's not the most expensive, sturdy little thing. And I managed to ding up the back of it, trying to open the back cover, which I thought I needed to do to find the dongle, which actually was in the box. I completely missed it. I am very bad with boxes. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, oh, I'm sorry. The one last thing I forgot, this is on my list of things. Um, this is a micro USB charge, which is mo most of the rechargeable ones are going to do micro USB charge. Uh, now the things that actually charge via micro USB have a habit of running out of power quicker than things that run out of batteries. And we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, but, uh, so that's what we've got right here. Um, you know, with that, so this one, once again, is $15 also a micro USB charge. Also like both, I keep forgetting to talk about things. Both of these are... Wi-Fi dongles, no Bluetooth. Okay, so this is a, this is still on the really small side. It's a little bigger in terms of footprint than the um, than the other ones we've been looking at. It has a really nice position in your hands. It's, it's, a, um, it's a thumb keyboard, thumb device all around. Basically, you're gonna operate this all thumbs, right? Okay. Which has, which is, you know, some positives and negatives. The only thing is, um, well, we'll talk about the keyboard in just a sec. Um, I guess we'll talk about it right now. It's the next thing on my list. So the keyboard right here has a fairly standard layout. Um, you know, a couple of keys moved around. It's just about everything has a couple of keys moved around. That's small, you know, pretty much all of these. Uh, it has a full uh, 12 function keys. They are the alternate keys here, which is the most standard thing is the function keys are the alternate keys. Um, if you're a computer programmer trying to program on your TV, which I actually do because I'm crazy, uh, then, you know, you'd rather have the function keys primary, but, you know, for most multimedia things, you'd rather have alternate stuff. Now, in this case, though, the function keys are not on media keys. The function keys are on numbers, which, you know, which is fine. It doesn't really interfere with anything. Uh, it just means you and you have a whole pile of media buttons. So you're not losing that on this remote. Um, keyboard layout is, like I said, it's keyboard layout is fa fairly standard. You'll be able to touch type to some extent if you're good with keyboards, but you'll also need to look at this. space bar is extremely small. Certain buttons are moved, like I said, certain buttons are moved around. Like here's the plus and minus down here. You know, where's the tilde on this one? Um, it's like hold, you know, it's like I'm still staring. There's the tilde, you know, right up in that corner right there. Um, uh, uh, in terms of missing keys, um, this one, I mean, there's no, there's no print screen and there's no scroll lock, but okay, here's the reality of scroll lock. There's nothing on your computer which uses scroll lock. If somebody uses scroll lock in your application, they're being a complete dork somehow. So just don't worry about scroll lock. I like print screen for old tasks, but nowadays I just even use snipping tool anyway. So whatever, like I have print screen, go to snipping tool. Um, uh, so. So that's, that's kind of the missing keys. There's just not a lot there. Um, okay, so in terms of, uh, so we have the alternate keys here. It's always nice to once again, to have this control alt delete alternate keys so you can switch users real quick. Um, there, some of, some of, of the, so there's the media keys up here. You got the media control right over here under one thumb and arrows under the other one. So that's kind of the idea is that you have media and arrows, but I think the, the arrows are less useful than the media. In some ways I'd rather have the the mouse over here, right? And that, that's kind of a thing. So like if you look at the other keyboards, you can keep your mouse, like like keep your thumb on the mouse the whole time, right? Because I'm not gonna move the arrows, you know, at, you know, you know, as much. But you know, it's in the center. You'll see a lot of keyboards with this general design though in the center. Um but you know it's got a standard set of keys, it's got the www and dot com buttons and it's got this E button, which I would have thought was Internet Explorer, but it doesn't do that. So uh, it's got a power button. So once again, you can accidentally press power. I don't like that it's next to everything, but it's next to the home button, which I never press anyway. Uh, this home button will generally bring up a web browser. I just generally do it another way. So um, this is an undo button. Let me see this. I'm gonna turn this thing. 
Uh, is this one not hooked up? Oh, it's not doing anything right now. So I may have bumped the hub. Um, that's weird. Maybe it's power drained. That's got power. Oh, there it goes. I needed to press a button to activate it. I did not realize that. This is something we have now learned. In order to activate the mouse pad, we must press a button, and then the lights turn on, and we know it's running. I don't like it when these things have lights on, because it means they're draining battery, even if it's just a tiny bit. Okay, let's see what happens with this button. We, we're, it's a live experiment. Okay, I'm opening Microsoft Word. I'm going to document one. I'm going to type something. I've kind of spent some time... So some of these I just got, and they're really new, and some of these we'll see later. Uh, you know, I've used an extensive amount, and um, but I wanted to spend some time typing on each one of these things. 2WO2, and then... No, maybe it's a back button. Let's check the web browser over here. Yeah, it's a back button. Okay. So it looks like an undo button, but it's a back button. Okay. Um, so let's talk about the mouse. Okay. So the positioning, the thumb positioning of this, it's a little distant, but you kind of have to move your thumbs. You can use both thumbs, though, and that's probably what you want, they want you to do. But you can, also, you can also move your fingers to the center of it, but you lose kind of the position. But you know, that's okay. You can do that. Um, the, the fast motion is okay, but not the best, but not too bad. The accurate motion is pretty decent. So of all the small ones, this one definitely has the best motion. You can do nice accurate motions most of the time, not the most, but accurate, but pretty good. And you can do big motions, although it requires, sometimes requires a bunch of scrolling more than you'd like. Um, the feel is a little bit off because of these little pictures right here. They wanted to tell you how to use it. So you've got like bumps in it. It doesn't really affect you too much, but it makes the feel a little weird. Um, the scrolling, uh, let, me make, let me verify that we have, uh, let's, let's, let's shrink this down and let's see what happens. I, I, I believe I know the answer to this question, but I don't want to sound like an idiot. Um, where did my mouse go on the other screen? I am an idiot. Okay. So, um, so this is the thing. So they've, they've, now they've got two buttons next to the window. Yeah, this accurate motion is actually a little tougher right here in these super tiny motions. So I'm noticing that. I thought it was pretty good, but when I tried to do some really super tiny motions, the accurate feel is not perfect. Okay, so let's check the scroll. And, okay, so we do not have left and right scroll. If you try to left and right scroll, it will up down. So that's not perfect either. But of these tiny keyboards, it does have the best accurate motion, even if it can be a little rough. Uh, and, you know, it generally has the best feel, and it's the cheapest. So if you feel the need for a tiny keyboard, I would go with this one. All that said, I don't think you should go with a tiny keyboard. I, I mean, something you'd hold in hands. I think you should... Something you hold, can hold in your lap, I think, will make you happier. It makes me happier, and that's what's important. My happiness, of course. The world's defined by my happiness. So, okay, so that's the three small ones. I got one kind of specialty item right here, and this is kind of a mid-size item, okay? This is the Re Mini K12. Uh, you can get it for, all these prices, by the way, is whatever I can get for cheapest for a new item on Amazon, sometimes from a reseller, not necessarily from Amazon. Uh, so $23.75 for the Re Mini K12. Now this one is a small keyboard with all the pieces of a full-size keyboard. So everything is just shrunk down. Uh, we'll see the full-size keyboards later, but now this isn't necessarily a bad idea. It's not necessarily a good idea. Now, let me explain. Um, and we're dealing with one of the problems on this one. That's, there we go. Okay. So it, it is interesting. Um, so all, most of these smaller keyboards require you like this one, and I already knew this about this one, but this one right here, you know, this, the Okella and this Re, they require you to touch a button before you can use the mouse. That's not going to be true on some of the later keyboards. It's a little annoyance. You don't want to necessarily have to press a button. But uh, now that said, if you want to wake up your computer with the keyboard, you almost always have to press a button. The mouse will not generally work for you. Um, okay, so this keyboard, like I said, it's got a full-size layout. The ergonomics are okay, but you kind of need to place it ultimately in your lap. You can't thumb it. You can't hold it. You can hold it two hands. You kind of do thumbs, but like you have to have big hands. You kind of like you see, kind of like how I'm reaching in the middle, holding the keyboard here. Okay, so generally, and that's and that's the thing. You're already placing it in your lap, 
And so if you're placing it in your lap, yes, it takes less space sitting around your living room, but you basically have to do the same thing as the full-size keyboards. All that said, that's not the main reason why I'm gonna knock this keyboard. We'll get to why in a minute. Uh, the layout of the keyboard is pretty standard. Um, there, there are only a few buttons moved around, like plus and minus over here, but even the tilde is back in its appropriate space. It's got 12 function keys and insert delete that are all off on the function button. And it's got a row of media and you know copy paste buttons on this one. Like all the like the, the, the random player buttons, you know, like on all these big keyboards, like it's gonna be kind of a ran bunch of random options. And if you remember to use them, you can get some use out of them. But you know, I don't know, it's just some of them, it's just like if I think to use them, I'll use them. But like I've been using a couple of these keyboards for years. I just don't think. Uh, there's also a couple of mouse buttons down here, which is, you know. Um, we'll see most of these keyboards that are larger, they have a mouse button up in the corner for the right click, not really a mouse button for the left click. Um, so, you know, this, this is generally a fairly tiny but usable keyboard. You know, you may or may not have, you know, as a typist, you may or may not be able to type on this as successfully as you'd like, but it still has keys moved, so your touch typing it, you, know, the, you know, there are other limits beyond just the size being smaller. I mean, even though it does have nice little dots to tell you where the uh, F and J keys are in case you want to touch type because, you know, it's a keyboard. Um, so, like I said, keyboard layout small, a little bit moved around. Uh, you know, it doesn't really have the biggest selection of alternate keys as well, but, you know, it's fine. It's just, it's trying to condense the space. So the other side, we talk about the mouse. Okay, now in theory, the ergonomics of the mouse like feel like they should be okay. The pad is nice and fine over here. It's taller than it is anything else. The feel is fine. It's a nice smooth surface. The problem is that while the fast motion is okay, a little sticky, a little sticky on the fast motion, the slow motion is just, the, the, the accurate motion is kind of terrible on this keyboard. Like, like I just picked this thing up and it's just, and this is kind of a running, story on a lot of these keyboards, just these touchpads, just terribly inaccurate. It's like making, oh, it's like, it's like torture trying to move this thing, thing around right on the screen right here. Um, I, I just do not like the, that motion. I cannot appreciate that. I would, I don't want to, like, it makes me want, like, monster, like this and one of the other keyboards we're going to see later, which was a huge disappointment, just makes me want to throw down the keyboard and just not touch it anymore. It does though, so we do have uh, two finger up and down scrolling. We do not have two finger left and right scrolling. Two finger up and down scrolling, but unlike the other keyboard, it doesn't, when you do two finger left and right, it doesn't like screw you up. You know, of course, once again, one finger click, you know, every one of these has one finger click. Most of them, except for the oldest one, have two finger right, uh, right click. Um, there's really no extra features on this thing. Once again, it's, um, I keep forgetting to say this, Power is micro USB, and pretty much all of them are micro USB to charge if they charge, if they don't use batteries. The larger ones are gonna use batteries though, we'll see. Um, and, uh, five volt, 300 milliamp max, anyway. Um, and uh, of course it has a dongle that it comes with uh, in order to operate as opposed to Bluetooth. All right, so those are the four smaller keyboards that I've worked with. I pretty much haven't found a smaller keyboard that I want to operate my multimedia center with, except like maybe on occasion. Uh, so you might use one of those as a backup. You might want one of those something, something you can keep around just because it's small and it doesn't get in the way. But I'm gonna, I will recommend that you use a full size keyboard. So we're gonna talk about the four most obvious full size keyboard choices, maybe the four only ones. Um, uh, well, you know, when, when you're, there, there are a lot of wireless keyboard mouse combos, wireless mouse packages you can pick up, but you don't want just a mouse sitting around because you don't you don't want to have to find a table in your living room to run the mouse off of. So, so these are all once once again, these are the four large keyboard mouse combos. So the first one, uh, so there are going to be three Logitech ones and micro Microsoft one, okay. So the first one we're gonna talk about is the wonderful K400R. The K400R, this is a 
You can get this for around $26. I believe that Logitech doesn't make these anymore. They come in black and white, but they're still very readily available from third-party sellers at this point. If my history with old keyboards tell me anything, if there's an old keyboard people like, eventually it will go away. Now, it's not a real tragedy that they don't make this anymore, as we'll see in a second, uh, because there's a good replacement. But, um, so this one I've been using for years. I had two of these, uh, one for the living room and one for the bedroom. Uh, that's, that's how I roll, computers everywhere, keyboard computers everywhere. Uh, you know, it's crazy, but that's what I do. Um, so, you know, this one, this one runs off of a you know, Wi-Fi dongle. And um, now, now the, the storage, now once again, it's kind of nice. Um, well, this one's plugged into the TV in the other room, so there's no dongle, but the dongle sits in the battery compartment right there. It's like, it's always nice for any of these wireless things to have a nice storage spot. Um, so you can pull it out and store it there. And, but, you know, it runs on a pair of double A's. These ones, AC Delco, hello. Um, now I find with these battery powered keyboards, I rarely have to replace the batteries. And usually when I replace the batteries, I realize that I made a mistake and that something else was going wrong and I shouldn't have replaced the batteries. So they last a long time. Uh, so in terms of keyboard layout, this basically has a full size keyboard layout, much like what you would find on a laptop. The only thing is that, um, you know, the arrow keys are kind of squished around in the bottom corner. Um, so we have, this one um, has a full 12 function keys on, on the alternate. Uh, once again, like just so many keyboards nowadays choose to put the function keys alternate because they don't love us programmers. Um, and the alternate, you know, there's a bunch of multimedia keys, you know, settings button, you know, uh, this one does have a uh, scroll lock and print screen, but you don't need the scroll lock, but you know, that's just super completist. You know, some of the buttons are kind of tiny, you know, the tilde button up here is real tiny, you know, and the, so they, what they did on this one is they chose to use full size arrow keys and then sh sh shrink down the, uh, let's what size is that? That is the right side, the right shift key, the right shift key, thank you. And so that's kind of the compromise they made on this keyboard. Um, but ergonomics wise, I find this very easy to type on, very easy to work with, of just about anything that you're gonna be able to hold in your lap like I can do, I can computer program off this thing, right? If I were to stick this on a desk, it would be very easy to just use this as a work keyboard. Now, of course, all of these keyboards that are like this, you know, the keys, you know, we're not talking about the fancy mechanical keys. You know, these aren't the nicest keys. If you are concerned about key feel, you're just gonna get a wired keyboard and plug it into something or whatever. But that's not, that's not the things you're worried about in your entertainment center. You're worried about lightness, but you can do all, you can just type, I've typed all kinds of documents on these keyboards. I'm generally very happy with it. It's, it's got the media buttons. Um, you know, I don't, I, I gotta be honest, uh, the, of, of the media buttons, I basically care about volume down, volume up, and mute. That's how I roll. I generally do not use any of the play, pause buttons. I usually use just click on the, because the interfaces of things vary so much, I usually just click on the items in the interface. This is my hands talking. Uh, there's a power button here, which I don't like. There's a lock button next to it. So you can see the power button here. One of my major complaints about this keyboard is the power button is too easy to click. I'm being very careful around that. Well, that's not how to click this TV, but none, none of these ones are. And you got a home button and this music button does something. Uh, here is the mouse button button, which most of these have up in a corner, which allows you to click the mouse. So you could be rolling, he, you could be using here and then click over here. But since you can just press your thumb down most of the time you just do not need the mouse button button. I just don't really use it, but most of them have it. Um, so not a huge selection of alternate buttons. Not really, this is like not missing keys at all. Very usable. Okay, so mouse feel. Okay, it's got a nice, um, a nice spot for the mouse, a nice, um, the, the fast motion is very good and the accurate motion is about as good as it gets. Um, in terms of scrolling, this one has two directional scroll, right? I don't know, I don't remember. I believe it does. Uh, oh gosh, I thought this was true. I'm gonna be right back. Pretend something's happening. I wanna tell you the absolute truth and I want to. I don't want just what I believe is in my head compared to, because I know the other Logitech keyboard does it. So I'll be right back.
confidence to say that my memory is correct. Yay. Okay. Left, right scrolling. Yes, that is, that is absolutely correct. Left, right scrolling. It scrolls left, right with two fingers. You put two fingers on it, scrolls left, right. Two fingers on it, scrolls up and down. Now this also has nice convenient buttons below the mouse pad. So if you want to be very discreet in your clicks and make sure you are clicking, you can use the left and right mouse button keys. Um, there aren't really any extra mouse features. There aren't really any extra features on this keyboard in general, but so here's my only thing about this keyboard. And it's probably because I've had a bunch of these keyboards and I've used them a bunch. I, I had two, I have two K400Rs and after a bun really heavy amount of use, one of them started functioning, uh, malfunctioning. So I kind of had to re had, had to replace it. So, you know, you know, heavy use. Yeah, let me comment on something else. Um, you have to watch out for when you're using one of these keyboards is if the touchpad gets wet a little bit, it'll often just stop functioning. And you may like think like, well, I'm not gonna throw water on my keyboard. Are you a moron, Kyle? Why would I throw water on my keyboard? Um, but you know, the, the, the real common scenario for me is I grip a cold beverage and the condensation on the beverage gets my fingers slightly wet. And so therefore I touch the pad and suddenly a little bit, just a little tiny bit of wetness ends up in the pad and it stops working. Now you just have to dry it off generally then to get it working again, but it's just it's the one little inconvenience with these things when you're sitting around having a drink, watching TV. So uh, $26 again, you can get this one, but there's another option you can choose. Um, and we're we'll, we'll, gonna show you that in just a moment. Um, that's actually two more options I, I recommend and one option I don't recommend. Okay, so since the K400R kind of isn't being made anymore, they replaced it with this updated K400 Plus. You may notice it's a very similar looking keyboard and it's pretty much the same keyboard as the other K400, but with a kind of a, just a new layout. Um, basically you have the same function keys. You've lost your print screen. There's a power, the power button is hidden under a function under this button over here, which makes it really tough to accidentally hit the power now, which is a positive. The volume has been moved off the function keys and over to this section, which I actually find I, I like that a lot more. And then this is going to be, you're going to see a second keyboard from Logitech, which is fancier, which has nearly the same layout. The button button is in the corner over here. But basically, it's like I said, $26 you can get this for, Wi-Fi, a dongle. Basically everything I say about uh, otherwise about the K400R applies to the K400 Plus, including the fact that this particular keyboard has a little problem right now. And it kind of ends up a situation where you'll be typing and like after quite some time using it, the first one died and then six months, eight months later, I started having problems with this keyboard. Now I really heavily use this keyboard. I use this keyboard an awful lot. So, you know, I don't know. I don't know why it started having problems. So it's something to think about, you know, it's just like, you may need to think of these things as disposable things you need to get rid of, but 26 bucks, not terrible. Uh, but there is one Logitech that hasn't failed me, but there's a little tiny problem with it, um, which has nothing to do with what it does. It's just, but K400R or K400 Plus, you know, I'd recommend the 400 Plus or then finding the 400 R unless you really like this nifty Van Halen thing. But these keyboards have been my workhorse. Uh, this black keyboard at the bottom still works for me in my bedroom a tremendous amount. I love it. I love these keyboards. They are great. Um, this is probably what you're looking for, but we still have a couple things to talk about. So, so when I realized that this keyboard was starting to act up, I was just you know, looking for a pile of keyboards, right? So I bought the tiny ones to see if I could ever find a tiny one that makes me happy. The answer is no. Um, and I decided to, that there is one, like just about all, like just all these keyboard touch pads that are, aren't tiny, you know, like, or whatever, that they're, they're pretty much, you know, even half tiny, you know, they're, they're all Logitech. They're, they're all the good ones, you know? So I thought, now I, I noticed that Microsoft began producing one. Now in the past, Microsoft has produced some very quality keyboards, which I really liked. They are, they've been a, they've been in the past a great keyboard manufacturer. My favorite work keyboard is a really cheap, well, formerly cheap, now it's expensive to get a copy, but a really cheap Microsoft keyboard that just really has a nice feel. I just love it. So I thought, well, I trust Microsoft. I used to work for Microsoft. They, they 
whatever, uh, they must have you know a decent keyboard. And so this is another Wi-Fi keyboard. Once um, oh, um, you know once once again battery powered, uh, and it is the Microsoft All-in-One Media Keyboard. Doesn't even have a numbered. I mean it's got a number somewhere, but it doesn't have a number in the name. Uh, this one is a little bit more expensive at thirty-three fifty-five. Now, initially, it's very similar to the Logitech K400 keyboards. It's a little bigger, a little heavier, button placement's a little different. Uh, the function keys are pretty much the same, although random things like page up and page down you know, kind of move. So like, so like on these keys, oh, sorry, I forgot one thing. I gotta go back just a sec. The one significant layout change between these keyboards is that the K400 Plus they decided to shrink down the arrow keys to make the shift on the right full size. So arrow keys worse, shift better. For the most part, you're going, you're probably going to appreciate that. If you're an arrow key addict, even you can use the arrow keys. They're very usable still. Okay, so this has a very similar layout to that K400 Plus, um, although, the, um, you know, the ergonomics are good for typing. The layout is good. There's the missing keys are just, I mean, like everything is like, like everything is just pretty much full size except for the arrow keys, which are squished similarly. They're not quite the same as the K400 plus. Um, the, uh, you know, it's just very standard keyboard. Um, you know, you got nice button, you know, the, the volume has been moved over here with the mute, like volume and mute. That's the ones I care about. So, you know, you can get to those, you know, it's easy enough with this hand instead of this hand. There's some stupid buttons on top of the keyboard right here I don't care about. Um, I really don't care about these buttons. I don't even remember what some of them do. Um, oh, look, I've lost my window. How exciting. Yay. Okay, so... If the, you know, if, if the typing feel is so good, well then... What about the mouse? And that's where this keyboard falls apart. Um, the... Fast motion is okay, but a little sticky. Well, surfaces feels a little rough, surface is a little rough. Okay, now one, when the fast motion is a little sticky, it usually means the slow motion, the accurate motion is gonna be terrible. And for a keyboard of this size, the accurate motion is just not acceptable at all. I just do not enjoy picking up this keyboard and using it to, and moving it around with it. Um, you know, it's just like that one thing compared to the Logitech keyboards almost makes it a complete fail. It does cost more than the Logitech keyboards as well. It's hard to justify on that grounds. Um, you know, that may just be, you know, that the pricing can change, but I, I just, I cannot, you know, recommend it. One other wacky thing about this keyboard, now it's completely fixable though, but you have to know what to do to fix it. The scroll is reversed from what, what it is on every other one of these devices. So even though it's got scroll left, right, but the scroll up down is reversed of what you traditionally expect on a, on one of these keyboards. Now, okay, so if you don't have a, now you may think, well, you can just reverse it. And that's true, although on Windows, if you're not using a laptop, you generally cannot reverse the touchpad by itself. In order to reverse the up down, you need to download the Microsoft software for keyboards, and then you have the option to reverse it. So you can get it back to normal then, but until you do that, it's like really wacky. Although some people like it. Um, no real extra features here, but so once again, keyboard, uh, the mouse motion is just not up to par on the Microsoft all-in-one keyboard for $33.55 on Amazon. Don't get it. Okay, so we've got one last keyboard to talk about. As long as I don't press stupid buttons, okay? Now in some ways, this is the nicest keyboard, although there are some drawbacks to it, which will draw my will make my friend Scott go crazy if when he knows this. Um, I, you know, so this is a Bluetooth keyboard and it is no, not battery powered. Um, you know, it is, it is rechargeable. Technically they're all battery powered, but don't think about that. Okay, this right here is the Logitech, oops, just a sec. I gotta make something, make sure something's still working. Okay, sorry about that. This is the Logitech K830. This is the most expensive of all the keyboards right here. 
from a third from a third party seller on Amazon with free shipping, you can get this for forty eight dollars. You buy it straight from Amazon, they'll charge you fifty five. Logitech lists this for a hundred dollars on their website. Do not pay a hundred dollars for this. You're crazy. Okay, so this is a Bluetooth rechargeable keyboard. Now. I almost prefer the battery powered keyboards once again to the rechargeable ones because this one does run out of power more frequently than I would like. And it's just whatever the ones that run on double A's rarely seem to run out of power the same amount. Just I don't know. You would think they would they just they cheap out of battery. I don't know. But that's the only real drawback to this Bluetooth keyboard uh, in terms of usability. Um, the cursor feel is spectacular. Like like better like 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 in terms of long motion and short motion probably better than any of the other keyboards. It has a smooth surface instead of a textured surface on the pad, which really helps out in terms of that motion. Um, the keyboard layout is pretty much like the uh, the K400 Plus. Uh, you know, it's just the shape of these buttons is actually just like the Microsoft keyboard. Um, the, the collection of buttons is pretty much like the K400 Plus. Um, now the, the mouse button is hidden right up here, so you'll forget that it exists. Um, but once again, the, the audio buttons are over the keypad. I really, these, these, these are the three most, my three most important media buttons, volume up, volume down, and uh, mute. So I'm very happy to have those right there. Um, just the typing feel is great. The feel of the keyboard overall is great. Um, so it is, it is Bluetooth though. So unless your system, you know, unless it, unless your hardware allows it, there's a good chance you will not like, like with my PC. So if you're using something like a NUC, you're probably going to be able to wake the thing up with the Bluetooth keyboard. If you're using just a PC, like mine with this random Bluetooth dongle, there's a good chance you won't be able to wake it up. So that's a disadvantage and it means I often have to keep something else around in the living room or I have to run over to the keyboard and press the power button to turn it on. You know, I'm just lazy. I don't want to walk up to the computer to turn it on. I want to find something, you know. Yeah, so, all right, so why, so this, if this is the nicest keyboard, the nicest feel, the nicest mouse, you know, same set of buttons as the Plus, it's just a wonderful keyboard, you know, other than, you know, running out of power occasionally, why would this drive my friend Scott nuts? Well, he can probably see it if you look at it, let me get the light on it. So look at that pad over there, you see how, let me try to find the right light here, there we go, let's see. Do, 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 there it is. So, as you use this, okay, this is after I've cleaned off the keyboard some, okay? This thing shows fingerprints like, like, like finger grease, anything like crazy, okay? You just see all kinds of fingerprint marks all over it. And this is like, this here is like the permanent state of this pad now after a year or so of use. It has just become permanently, you can tell where my fingers interact with it most, and that's never gonna go away. So, despite being the prettiest, prettiest of all the keyboards, it's just gonna get ugly over time and drive Scott nuts. So, watch out for that if you're the one person who might be watching this video. Um, I wonder. Hmm. So, but, this is the most expensive, but, okay, for all of that, I still, um, uh, right. I still feel like this is, you know, like, like this is, they like, do feel like this is the nicest one. Just depending on what you want though, if you don't want to deal with the fact that your computer won't break, wake up, right? K400 plus K4, K400R, that's your best option, okay? If you want the Bluetooth experience and you don't care, look at the back of this thing. It's just, ugh, Scott, sorry, sorry. It's just messy. It's just sticky and fingerprinty. But like, if you want the nicest touch experience, the nicest actual use experience, then you want to get the Logitech K830. All right. I'm gonna scratch my nose here, scratch the nose. Uh, that is all for this. That is all the keyboards I wanted to talk about. I hope if you happen to see this for some strange reason that you got some useful information. Uh, and uh, if you have anything, you know, like, share, and subscribe. Everyone says that. I supposed to say that at the beginning though to get people to go to it. Uh, not that I want any subscribers or likers or sharers.
don't know if you want to share, you can go ahead. This is just crazy, but it's like a stream anyway. YouTube treats those differently, so it'll be weird. Uh, but that's all the information I have. So long.